uh, one of the uh, efforts of, of the Congressional Reconstruction folks was the Freedmen's Bureau, white and black. Um, basically, the goal of the Freedmen's Bureau was to go down south, open up a Freedmen's Bureau, and their goal was to help slaves, the four million slaves, survive and adjust uh, after being emancipated. Um, help them find families, um, help them find kinfolk, you know, uh, close and and close relatives and friends, and so forth. Um, a very popular sentiment among freed slaves was, now I can go try and find my family. All right, they did not go up north. You would think they would run up north where they it was it was better. It wasn't good. It wasn't great, but it was better. But they didn't. They stayed down south. All right, they would also provide food and medicine and clothing um, for slave former slaves and poor whites. Um, they tried to um, before the before Andrew Johnson reversed the order and gave the land back to the former planters. Uh, the Freedmen's Bureau was a, was was. A, an avenue which a, a former slave could take and try to get their land. All right, um, they were actually the ones that were. Uh, uh, some of these former slaves were actually on land for a year or two or, or more, and had and had to be informed that the land was being given back to uh, the former planters. And it was the Freedmen's Bureau that actually had to go back onto like the Sea Islands, for example, and and tell the slaves, "Listen, this land's being taken back from you again. It's going to the former planters." It was their job to, to do that. Okay. Uh, so the biggest success of the Freedmen's Bureau was health care and education. All right. Uh, you know, state-run public health, health, uh, state-run public schools uh, came out of the Freedmen's Bureau that were built by uh, former slaves and free blacks that were free before the war. Now, notably, blacks adopted free slaves, ad adopted different ways of testing their freedoms after the war. Uh, moving about, seeking family, seeking kin, rejecting older forms of differential behavior. You know, we looked at, at in the beginning of the school year, where uh, working class whites up in revolutionary in the revolutionary colonies, revolutionary era colonies, were destroying that differential society and refusing to kind of bow and kowtow to their elites, their social betters. Well, uh, there was an element of that amongst uh, former slaves down south, refusing to admit. Uh, refusing to allow them to become submissive to their former owners. Also, the black family became more like the typical white family after slavery in that the men became the breadwinners and the women were the homemakers, more gender roles. Right? You know, it wasn't like the women were being forced, uh, like under slavery, women were sometimes forced to be in the ha uh, a house slave or out on, out on the plantation with the men. After slavery was abolished, the black family did adopt more of the gender roles of the white family. Also, for the first time, this is great, some planters had to do physical labor, since they didn't have slaves anymore, some of them. All right, so key reconstruction amendments and terms. Don't forget the 13th Amendment made slavery illegal. Uh, don't forget the movie Lincoln overly dramatizes that. It was a done deal by then. Um, the 14th Amendment grants citizenship to anybody who's born here automatically. So it was, it was no longer a debatable question if black people were citizens or not. Uh, it also provided for equal protection under the law, which, remember, led to the whole separate but equal doctrine. Um, and except in the case of being pardoned, which happened quite often, former Confederate officials could not hold state or federal office. Officers. Former Confederate officers could not hold state or federal office. If you were like a... a a foot soldier in the Confederate Army, that was different. Fifteenth Amendment granted black men the right to vote in 1865, uh, but remember the South found loopholes around this. Poll taxes, literacy tests, um, that were eventually the Voting Rights Act of 65 overturned that. Some important terms. Um, remember, uh, shortly after the Civil War was over, Reconstruction begins, the South begins kind of turning the tables on how we remembered the Civil War. Uh, a famous phrase, I forget who said it, um, the North won the Civil War and the South's been winning the... The North won the war, but the South's been, the South's been winning the peace ever since. So, the South has won the way we remember the war. And guys like Eric Foner and, and, and modern-day historians are trying to rectify that. And the way you are learning it in class is trying to change that. Alright, so shortly after the war is when the South began talking, oh, wait a second, the war was not about slavery. The whole thing our vice president said, 
forget that. He didn't know what he was talking about. It was states' rights. It was not slavery. It was brother against brother. Isn't that tragic? Brother against brother? Um, and then they begin, you know, you also begin to hear about the violence and the, the corruption and the, and, and the incompetency down south. And this whole mythology of the Civil War began. Uh, that was at, fir at first created by the south. And you will see it uh, in the movie Birth of a Nation, for example, Brother Against Brother. Now, it also depicts the abolitionists as evil, the radical Republicans as villains out to punish the, the, the white South. It was just trying to protect the noble lost cause of the South. Um, lost cause, as in standing up to tyranny of, of the national government. Um, and also villains were the scalawags, you know, Southerners that were pro-Reconstruction that were pro-racial equality. Okay, Southerners that were Republican were called scalawags. Um, carpetbaggers, a so carpetbag is kind of like a suitcase, were Northern Republicans who went down South and as the mythology went, were down there just to dupe Southern blacks into, you know, manipulating them and economically benefiting off of them. You know, they were just, uh, just these greedy opportunists in the eyes of the white former slaveocracy. All right. So Northerners that were Republican that moved south during Reconstruction out to make a buck, out to make a fortune, they were the carpetbaggers. It was part of that whole uh, mythology of, of the Civil War and Reconstruction. Um, now the Force Acts were passed in response to the, the Klan developing. Remember, the Klan was in part to terrorize the Black South back into submission. So federal troops were used to quell the Klan. In fact, Ulysses S. Grant, who becomes president, uh, suspends habeas corpus to crush the Klan. And they come back actually in the 1920s, 19 teens and 20s, but this time they're national. And who they hate is, it's a big, it's a larger group this time. It includes more immigrants, not just blacks. All right. Now the end of Reconstruction, why did it end? Um, for one reason, the Supreme Court in 1873 in the, in the famous or infamous slaughterhouse cases, all right, uh, argued that most of the rights most rights are under state control, so it further diluted things like the Civil Rights Bill of 1866 uh, and other things that were passed during Reconstruction. Also, the Compromise of 1877, uh, which settled the dispute of the 1876 election. Now, remember, by this point, a lot of the troops down south, the Union troops, had left. In fact, there there had been fluxes. And, you know, the number of troops down south, Union troops to enforce Reconstruction was going up and down. All right, For the most part, when there were major elections, presidential elections, for example, 1864, 1868, you would see the numbers of troops down south increase and then decrease after the, the election was over, just to kind of police polling places so black people could vote during Reconstruction. Um, but for the most part, there were not enough soldiers down there to really enforce a whole lot. Uh, they were asked to basically do twice as much with half as many people once the war was over. In other words, the major fighting was over, but they were still supposed to police the South, but do it with half the people. You know, it, it's, it would be hard-pressed to tell someone that their child was going to go down and, and keep fighting the war uh, just for years and years and years on end. All right. Um, so by the mid to late 1870s, Northern desire to... to to reconstruct the South was waning. There was a, a, an economic depression in 1873 where ta tax money was, was less than it used to be. Uh, remember we talked about labor strikes were beginning to pop up. There was a huge one in 1877 in the railroads. All right, So desire to reconstruct was waning. And finally, in 1876, uh, it was Rutherford, B., uh, Rutherford Hayes versus Tilden, Sam Tilden, in the 1876 election. And if you look at the map here, Tilden, a Democrat, got more votes. Oh, that New York uh, got more votes. New York was, was Democrat. Um, but the deal was the Democrats, and but none of them got enough votes to automatically win. Had to go to the House. All right, they each got a fifty percent fifty percent of the electoral votes. So the deal was the the Republicans agreed that Reconstruction would formally end a hundred percent. All soldiers would leave, and they can keep the White House as long as Reconstruction ends entirely, and that's what ended it—a backroom deal. 
This one, I think, is more of a corrupt bargain than the, the alleged first one in 1824. All right? So Hayes becomes president, and that ends Reconstruction. You can't argue after that if there was any semblance of Reconstruction. So all military rule in the South was over. Uh, Southerners were appointed to the cabinet by, by Hayes. Uh, what was the effect of the end of Reconstruction? You saw Jim Crow laws popping up down South. You remember Jim Crow was a famous minstrel show character. The segregation laws began to pop up that were upheld by the 1896 Plessy v. Ferguson case. That separate but equal is okay. We talked about this in a, sub, in a prior video quiz. And uh, by the turn of the century, 1910, 1920, black people couldn't really vote down South. You know, through poll taxes and literacy tests and just outright violence and terror, you know, you, you didn't vote if you were black down south. Even if you passed the test, you had to fill out information about your job and your, your address, and you were afraid of what was going to happen to you or your, and your family as a result. Not to mention the thousands and thousands of lynchings that took place during this nadir of race relations from 1877 to 1930s. So be sure to take the quiz that will pop up right now.